Good morning, men and women of Christ. Glad to be back with you with another three-part teaching. <clears throat> and today's teaching will be, is church faith-based or is it fear-based? Is church faith-based or is it fear-based? Ephesians 2.8 says, For we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now the gift of God is Christ. So we know that the faith is Christ and Christ alone is the faith. And in that text, it does not one time mention church. So once you're in faith, you can separate fear from faith. And what you were given in fear and what you were saved from by faith. It is important for us to know the difference between whether church is fear-based or is it faith-based. See, most people go to church because they don't want to go to hell. It, it's because it's fear-driven. Because church is founded on the letter, which is the Bible, and we were given the letter by sight in the flesh while being in the deadness of our sins and trespasses under law in the spirit. So in the spirit, we had the fear of death and we were given the letter by sight while being outside of faith in the fear of death under law in the spirit because the fear of death came from the fear of being judged to death according to the sins that God had already judged. All sin has been judged to death. And we were in the fear of death because if we weren't saved from sin, then we would have to bear the judgment of sin, which God through Christ has already judged all sin to death because sin is contrary to Christ, which is contrary to God. That makes it evil because Christ is the, Christ is the very face of God. He's the very righteousness of God. He is the very mind of God. So church is a fear-based uh, religious system. All church, no matter what church you go to, it's a religious system. Our flesh goes to church. Why does our flesh go to church? Because our flesh goes to church because your flesh can be religious. But it is your spirit that has to become righteous. We have to discern religion, uh, righteousness from religion, but that doesn't happen until we're in righteousness. So, uh, church is fear-based. It is fear-based, but you can't distinguish the difference between that which is fear-based and that which is faith-based until you're in faith. And the faith is Christ, and Christ alone is the faith. 2 Corinthians 5-7 says that we, are, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. What is sight? Sight is what you naturally see. We naturally see the letter. We naturally see the Bible. And in that fallen state, we follow the Bible by sight. But that was fear-driven from being under the law, dead to faith. And whenever you're dead to faith, you're, you're blinded to the faith. And this is what the enemy uses. He uses church and the system of church by sight to keep you under the law and dead to faith. So church becomes your faith. Church becomes your faith. And uh, it or should we say church becomes a substitute for faith and he uses it to blind you to the gospel second Corinthians 4 3 and 4 says for if our gospel is hid it is hid from those who are lost it is hid from those who are lost in whom the god of this present age that's antichrist antichrist himself the devil had blinded the minds of them which believe not least the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them so he uses church and not only does he use church by sight, but he uses church by sight to keep us under law, in the spirit, and dead to faith. And if you're dead to faith, you're in fear. You're in the fear of death. 
the fear of death is Satan's spirit. Because he knows he's already been judged to death and the end, resu the end result of anything he does is death. So we have the fear of Satan's spirit when, when we're in church by sight, we're, we're under law dead to faith. So we have the spirit of fear. <clears throat> we have Satan's spirit, that's the spirit of fear. When we're outside of faith, all right? 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, to examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. To examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. Why? Because we just touched on 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So once we're in faith, we're no longer in fear. Once we're in faith, we're in the gospel. We're no longer fear-driven. That means we, we have been unchained from the church mentality. Because that system was given to us in sin. Church is a system. And it was given to us in sin uh, by sight while being dead under law to faith. We were dead to faith. Not dead in faith. We were dead to faith. Okay. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It says to examine ourselves to see whether you be in the faith. You're either in the faith, which is the gospel, or you're in fear. And if you're in fear, you're outside of the gospel. What's outside of the gospel? Church. What's outside of the spirit? Flesh. What's outside of the righteousness of Christ? The religion of Christ. The Bible is the religion of Christ, but it was given to us for a shadow, for a, a time. And the dispensation of the letter is over. Now we're in the dispensation of the light where the Lord is bringing gospel light to the letter. That's, that's the light of salvation. He's bringing that gospel light to the letter. So we have to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. And the faith is Christ and Christ alone is the faith. We have to be in the spirit. And once you, you, you're saved from your sins, you, once you're saved from sin, you're saved from the law and you're saved from the judgment of the law. Not only are you saved from the law and the judgment of the law, but you're saved from the fear that had you bound uh, under the law. And we are, we're saved from church. We're saved from the Bible. We're saved from everything that we could not be saved by because in that fallen, faith, in that fallen state, we exercised fear that we thought was faith in things that we naturally saw. And we can't be naturally saved because the flesh, our humanity, it comes from the earth and it goes back to the earth. But our spirit came from God. Our spirit was created in the image of God, which is Christ. And it goes back to God. So it has to go back to God in the image of Christ. Because whatsoever is not a faith is sin. And he's already judged all sin to death. So we have to know the difference between faith and fear. Romans 14, 23 says whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Now is church sin? Is the Bible sin? No. But using it as a substitute for faith, it becomes sin unto you. And this is how Satan keeps you dead to faith. He keeps you in the system and, the, uh, and he uses the system to blind you to the Savior. Romans 9, 8. For they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. The children of the flesh, they're fear driven. They're in church. The children of the prom, prom, uh, of the promise, they're, they're, they're faith-based. They're in Christ. They're faith-based. They're in Christ. <clears throat> the children of the flesh, these are not the children of, 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 of God because they're outside of the spirit. Under law and dead to faith. No child of God is under law because a child of God is saved from the law. 
You only become a child of God once you're saved from the law. You cannot be a child of God under the law. Under the law, you're a fallen creation of God. When you're saved from the law, only then do you become a child of God. Everything under the law is fear-based. Romans 8, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. You see, it makes the distinction between the flesh and the spirit. So you can make the distinction between fear and faith. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, it's going to tell you who the spirit of God is. It says, if any have not the spirit of Christ, then none of his. So the spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. And you have to have the spirit of Christ to belong to Christ in order to belong to God. Because the only way to God is through Christ. Because Christ is the circumcision. He's the circumcision. He's the righteousness of God. No one, you can come to God in sin. Anybody can have a God. You can, you can turn anything into a God. The Bible is a God to people. The church is a God to some people. But the true God, you have to come to him through Christ. Because you can't come to him in sin. You, you, your spirit has to be cut away from sin. This is all spiritual. The original us is spiritual. The original us is spiritual, not natural. Second Timothy one Second Timothy one seven says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and of a sound mind. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and of a sound mind. The spirit of fear, that Satan spirit under the law. That spirit that we're born in the deadness of our sins and trespasses, that Satan spirit. Our spirit is born in the deadness of his spirit, which has already been judged to death. To death, Sin is spiritual. And we being in the deadness of our sins and trespasses under the law, sin has already been judged to death, but we have not been judged to death. But we're in danger of being judged to death if we're not saved from those sins that has us bound under the law. So religion, uh, the Bible, given to us in the flesh while being in the deadness of our sins and trespasses under law in the spirit, we were dead to faith. <clears throat> we were dead to faith and had to be saved by faith. Because in that fallen state, sin took our spirit, made it subject to our soul, and our soul became subject to our body, to our physical bodies. So therefore, all, all we could see was natural. We, we had fear that was disguised to look like faith through religion. We were completely and totally deceived. Completely and totally deceived. And a lot, a lot of people are still in that state today. Completely deceived into thinking uh, they have faith, but they have fear disguised to look like faith. And only once you're in faith can you separate fear from faith. Because once you're in faith, you're in the spirit. And you're free from the fear that had you bound to the flesh. So once you can distinguish the flesh from the spirit, you can distinguish fear from faith. <clears throat> He's not giving us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, peace, and a sound mind. That's the spirit of God. The spirit of God is a sound mind. That's the mind of the spirit. Okay. How do we know this? Because 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, For who had known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the mind of God. This is the spirit that we are saved by. Where the mind of our spirit is put back in Christ's spirit. Because sin is the mind of death. Life is the mind of God. The mind of God is Christ. The mind of death is sin. So once we're in the mind of, of Christ, which is faith, we can discern faith from sin because faith is knowledge based. Sin is also knowledge based, but the knowledge of sin blinds you to the knowledge of light, to the knowledge of life.
in all the life-giving benefits that comes to the soul and the body without, through being properly ex exercised by the mind of life within. Health, everything. The things you feared happening, like getting sick, detrimentally sick, things like that, you're saved from that fear. Because all manner of sickness and disease comes through your unborn again spirit to your soul, then to your body by the fruit of sickness spirit. All sickness is sin. All sickness is sin. And we have to be cut off from where sin cannot have access to our physical body and have us self-destructing in the physical body. <clears throat> we have to be back in faith. So the fruit of health can come to the physical body. There's, there's healing. We, we, if you're in Christ, you're spiritually healed. But there's also a natural healing that follows. Because once your spirit in, is in purpose within, your flesh has to come under the preservation of purpose by the fruit of, fruit of the spirit without. <clears throat> because your flesh has to be preserved according to purpose. But your flesh has no preservation outside of purpose. There's no such thing as self-preservation. We didn't create ourselves. We, we can't preserve ourselves in any aspect. The Lord created us. He must save and preserve us in every aspect. Okay. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh promises nothing. The words I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life, which means they are spiritual life. They are spiritual life. And as he speaks into your spirit, once your, your spirit is back in the mind of his spirit, that brings about that transformation back to him. And through that transformation, he comes to the soul and the body by the fruit of the spirit. That's fruitful living. That's kingdom living. That's blessed living. Okay, let us get into the teaching. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. 8 says, for we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We are saved by grace. Grace is the goodness of God. Through faith, we, faith is the spirit of God, and that not of ourselves. We had neither part nor lot in that work. We had nothing to do with it. It is a gift of God. You don't do anything for a gift. You receive it. All right? Nine, not of works, least any of us should boast, because everything we did in the flesh was fear-based, and that was biblical in the flesh. So we go from what was fear-based and biblical in the flesh to that which is faith-based and gospel in the spirit. Ten, for we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus Restored back to Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So our eternal works are already set up for us because Christ is the eternal work of God. And once your spirit is back, once the mind of your soul, which is your spirit, is back in his spirit, through transformation of the mind of your spirit, he's going to come to the soul and the body by the fruit of the spirit. That's how those eternal works manifest into this fallen world. Eternal work is the eternal light of Christ being manifested to a lost and dying world and a lost and dying church so they can see the difference between light and darkness. The difference between faith and the fear Satan is using under the law to keep you dead to faith and in the flesh. And in the flesh. His works have to be exposed. Ephesians 1.3 <clears throat> Because once the hidden things of darkness are brought to the light. They're annulled. He can't walk. He can't work in the light. He can only work through deceit. And all deceit is darkness. Ephesians 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. This is the key who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. The heavenly places is the mind of Christ, which is the mind of God, where the spiritual blessings are. Everything outside of the mind of Christ 
is outside of faith, and whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It is the mind of death. It is the mind of death. And the mind of death is fear-based, not faith-based. This is why 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says to us to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. It didn't say to see whether we be in church. It says to see whether we be in the faith. Because only once you're in the faith can you make that distinction between faith and church. This is not a bashing on church, but these things have to be separated. These things have to be separated. Salvation has to be separated from information. The information, which is the letter, was designed to point you to the salvation, which is the faith, which you have to be saved by. Okay, and this brings us to a conclusion of part one of this teaching. Love you with the love of Christ, and I'll see you in part two.